How do we put our racial equity commitment into practice? I think there are three ways that we do that. One is by sort of looking at and uh, interrogating our own process as a department. So whether that is doing anti-bias training for all of our panels that review funding programs or public art awards, or whether that's uh, convening a change team and running racial equity toolkits on the development and establishment of new programs and policies. I think we're trying to figure out how we do that work in a way that's accountable, in a way that's consistent with those, with those values uh, of racial equity. I think we do a lot of work to try to build that muscle in the field that we serve. So things like Public Art Boot Camp, or the Turning Commitment into Action program, Creative Advantage program, where we are centering communities of color and trying to build capacity uh, for racial justice and for greater equity in the work we do, in the funding programs, in the public art, in the arts education, in the cultural space. So that's about sort of external facing work. Artist Up has been a program, it's been ongoing for about five years. It's sort of always looking at different subsets of the cultural community that haven't been uh, represented historically as well. And so it was uh, ethnic groups, different ethnic communities for a long time. There was a disabilities cohort um, more, more recently. And I, so I think it's always just looking at how do we make sure we're serving um, all the people that we can with all the tools that we have and that forms of oppression are interrelated. We lead with race because we know that that is the greatest predictor based on all the data that we have. But by no means is that to exclude other important areas of uh, focus where we want to bring uh, greater equity and opportunity to everyone that we can. What I'm proud of is that I think each area of our work, our funding programs, both traditional and emerging, our public art program, our sort of newer work in arts education or in cultural space, I think all of that work is asking itself how it can do that in a way that's more racially equitable, in a way that provides opportunities that will, that will benefit everyone. Um, and another program I'm super proud of is, is Public Art Boot Camp, because it recognizes that it's, the public art's a pretty rarefied field. Um, it's, you know, 50 years old or so uh, as, as, a, as a public funded practice and um, tends to be dominated by, by folks who've been in the field for a long time. But we've been asking ourselves, how do we bring more folks into that table? How do we look at different kinds of artists, different kind of art and different kind of calls that are both permanent and temporary and momentary and utilize a program like Public Art that really digs into the deep nuance of presenting work in the public right of way, the public realm. Um, that is distinct from studio practice or museum practice. Uh, and it, it allows us to be more intentional about who we can make those investments in. So we're trying to create sort of a ladder of opportunity that allows people to both deepen their skill set and also have their, have their first opportunity to practice uh, bringing their work uh, into the public. We've really positioned the work of our office less as the what and more as the how. So we're not trying to be as concerned with um, the artistic merits of this project or that project, but our priority is more on how can artists and how can art and culture and how can our creative community advance multiple goals that the city has, whether that's a reimagined waterfront, a successful education system, a thriving local economy, a strong uh, cultural tourism industry, thinking about all the tables that artists and arts can be at in order to create more value and more outcomes for more people. And I think that that has seen our work grow a lot. 